beginning. We live in a beautiful world. Just look at the amazing things around you. Let's go back to the beginning and see what the Bible tells us about how it all began. In the beginning, God made the heavens and the earth. God moved over the darkness and said, Light! He called the light day, and he called the darkness night. Day one! Duh! Then, God made a space to separate the waters above from the waters below. He called the space sky. Day two, done. God gathered the waters together and dry ground appeared. He called the ground land and the waters seas. Then he made plants like grass, grain, and trees. Day three, done. Then, God made lights in the sky. He made the sun for the day, the moon for the night, and all the stars. Day four, done. God made fish to swim in the waters and birds to fly in the sky. Have babies, he told them. Fill the world with splashing and singing. Day five, done. Next, God made animals. He made farm animals, wild animals, and animals that crawl on the ground. Just one more thing to make, God said. The most special thing of all. <laughs> So, in his image, God made man and woman. Have babies, he said. Take charge of the world. Care for the fish, the birds, and the animals. Day six, done. <laughs> Then, God looked at everything he had made. 
It's very good, he said. So, on the seventh day, he rested and made that day special. Day seven, done. The First Sin The first man and woman, Adam and Eve, lived in a beautiful garden that God made for them. But Satan came as a crafty serpent and tempted Adam and Eve. Did God say you must not eat the fruit from these trees? The serpent asked Eve. Just the tree in the middle, Eve replied. If we eat from it, we'll die. You won't die, said the serpent. There's a reason why God doesn't want you to eat from that tree. If you do, you'll be like him. You'll know what he knows. ate the fruit. She gave some to Adam, who was with her. He ate it too. And at once, they knew things they had never known before. One thing they knew was that they were naked. They sewed leaves together to cover themselves. They'd never felt fear or shame before, so they knew something was wrong. God called. Eve! We're hiding, said Adam. We're naked. You know that because you ate from the tree, God sighed. Then Adam blamed Eve, and Eve blamed the serpent. God said, Serpent, you must crawl on your belly. A woman's son will defeat you. Eve, childbirth will be painful. Adam, growing food will be difficult. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 
Then God made clothes for Adam and Eve and sent them out of the garden. He put an angel with a flaming sword there so they could not return. Two by two. The earth filled up with people, but they sinned so much that God was sorry he had made them. He decided to send a flood to wash away everyone on earth. There was a man named Noah who wasn't like the others. Noah loved God and obeyed him. God decided to spare Noah and his family from the flood. God warned Noah about the flood. He told him to build an enormous boat with a low roof, three decks, a window, and a door. In obedience, Noah built it. God told Noah to collect two of every kind of animal, one male, one female. Then Noah, his family, and the animals went into the boat. God shut the door. <laughs> it rained for 40 days and 40 nights. Water fell from the sky and rose from the oceans and lakes. Even the tallest mountains disappeared beneath the flood. <laughs> 
Meanwhile, Noah, his family, and all the animals were safe in the boat, floating on the floodwaters. God had not forgotten about Noah, not even for a moment. God sent a wind to blow. The waters went down. The boat rested on Mount Ararat. Noah sent out a dove. When it didn't return, he knew it was safe. When the ground was dry, God told them to come out. He put a rainbow in the sky as a promise that He would never flood the whole earth again. <laughs> God's Amazing Promise Abraham lived in Haran. Abraham, God said, I want you to leave Haran and go to another land. God didn't tell Abraham where that was. Trust me, God said. Do this, God said, and your children will become a great nation. How? Abraham wondered. His wife Sarah was too old to have children. Trust me, God said. <laughs> Go where I tell you, God said, and you will have more descendants than there are stars in the sky. They will bless the whole world. Trust me. <laughs> so Abraham trusted God. He took Sarah, his nephew Lot, and everything they owned. He went where God told him to go. He went to the land of Canaan. <laughs> God said Abraham would have more descendants than there are blank. When he arrived, Abraham camped at Shechem. God appeared to him. I will give this land to you and your children, God said. Abraham built an altar to God there. Oh! <laughs> 
Abraham traveled around God's promised land. He was glad that he had trusted God. So he built another altar and gave thanks to God for all he had been promised. Abraham built an altar to God, giving thanks for all he had been promised. True or false? Abraham's big test. Abraham's big test. God promised Abraham a son, and from that son, many descendants, who would bless the whole world. But Abraham and his wife Sarah were too old to have children. Hmm? Hmm. Twenty years went by. Still, Abraham trusted God's promise. When he was 100 and Sarah was 90, God reminded them of his promise. Sarah was going to have a baby. <laughs> 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 when their son was born, Sarah was so joyful that she laughed. God has brought me laughter, she said. So they named their son Isaac, which means he laughs. <laughs> God promised Abraham a son whose descendants would bless the world. True or false? When Isaac was a boy, God tested Abraham by telling him to take Isaac to Mount Moriah and kill him as a sacrifice to God. Abraham was confused, but still he trusted God. <laughs> Isaac carried the wood, and Abraham held the knife and torch. Together they climbed the mountain. Where is the lamb for the sacrifice? asked Isaac. God will provide it, Abraham replied. <laughs> Abraham arranged the wood on an altar, tied up Isaac, and laid him on the wood. As he raised the knife to kill Isaac, an angel called his name. Abraham!
What did God tell Abraham to kill as a sacrifice? Don't hurt the boy, the angel cried. God knows you trust his promise. Look, there in the bushes, a ram is caught by its horns. Sacrifice that instead. So Abraham sacrificed the ram instead of his son. He called the place God will provide, because God provided the sacrifice. Just as God had said, his promise came true. Did Abraham believe God would really keep his promise? <laughs> 